Hi guys, today I will tell you about the torch discharge generator that I'm currently building. I will show you the circuit, I will show you the torch discharge and I will tell you what the torch discharge actually is. So yeah, let's get started. Now I must admit, though the circuit is very simple, when it comes to vacuum tubes my knowledge is very basic. So most of the time and in this case I just replicate the circuit which you can see on the screen now and it just works. So I will quickly show all the components to you. That's my 12 amp variac. It powers the voltage quadrupler, which is actually the symmetrical voltage doubler, the positive doubler and the negative doubler. It produces 1200 volts, which comes to this circuit. There are some power resistors there and capacitors. Uh, here's the vacuum tube, it's GU50 pentode. Here's the heating transformer, which heats the cathode. And here we have the resonator, the torch discharge output and the feedback capacitor. So yeah, let's see the torch discharge now. So yeah, now the cathode is heated and I am turning up the voltage on the variac. And the torch discharge, you actually have to ignite it with something like a screwdriver with the insulated handle of course. You can see it produces some arcs. And if I turn the voltage even higher up, the arc kind of not distinguishes but stays as single electrode discharge. Yeah, now we have the 220 volts on the variac and we have a stable torch discharge. You can see it resembles the candle flame in its appearance hence the name torch discharge but actually <laughs> I have a bit, little bit of confusion here because I haven't found a proper English name for this discharge uh, because uh, most of what I found are some not native speakers calling it like they're calling call it in their native language for example torch discharge RF flame RF plasma torch or something like that RF stands for radio frequency of course and yeah you can see it I will adjust the camera you can see the torch discharge has its main where's my screwdriver has its main bright part and it has this kind of a diffuse tail at the top you can see the whole discharge now and if I turn the aperture down, you can see the interesting thing. On the top of this head nut, it actually has a little bright purple spot. Yeah, you can see now the main channel of the discharge and the so-called uh, cathode point. Yeah, <laughs> cathode point. Not sure how it is in English. But it is this purple uh, just point on top of the cap nut and after that comes the main torch discharge. Yeah, how do I turn it so you see the point and the discharge at the same time? Yeah. Good enough. Okay. So this discharge is actually very hot, the central part may be above 3000 degrees Celsius. Um, this is the thermal plasma and uh, if you've seen the similar <coughs> had a little bit of catastrophic failure here. Remember when I said the discharge was hot? <laughs> it is hot, I'm not lying. because. It uh, heated the cap nut, the cap nut heated this wire, uh, you can't see it, but uh, anyway, the wire that uh, was soldered to the feedback capacitor and one of the feedback capacitor plates just fell off. Now I have it kept with an alligator clip. So yeah, what I was saying was that if you've seen similar discharge on YouTube before, Chances are that you've seen actually not a torch discharge, but the torch arc, so-called torch arc. 
the difference is that uh, this discharge has its uh, electrons produced by the means of field emission. It was uh, this spot that you saw earlier that has a high electric field that just rips the electrons from the metal of the cap nut. And uh, most of the discharges that uh, are on YouTube are produced from uh, thin wires that are heated to high temperatures and even uh, are melted. Uh, this of course induces thermionic emission, the emission of electrons by the means of uh, heating the wire. So this is not actually a torch discharge, not a pure torch, dis torch discharge. It's, <laughs> it's hard to say torch discharge. What do you know? But yeah, mm, here you can see the normal torch discharge and uh, actually in my circuit I have a potentiometer which I can turn to create a bigger discharge but uh, the anode of the G50 will also heat up so it must be a temporary set yeah now I will show you the biggest torch discharge I can get from this setup yeah now you can see the biggest torch discharge I can get including the top tail it is about 12 centimeters high I can probably get it a little bit bigger but uh, the vacuum tube may break down so yeah I will just let you watch the discharge first you'll see the channel of the discharge yeah very nice and now the whole discharge discharge with its diffuse envelope yeah nice stuff turning it down now we'll talk a little bit about what torch discharge actually is and uh, this is actually very simple. The torch discharge is the ionized channel that is heated up by the displacement currents or capacitive currents. So when a streamer occurs in the positive half cycle of the high frequency AC voltage, the, this streamer is uh, heated up by the capacitive currents that flow through it and it uh, becomes thermally ionized and uh, we see this thermally ionized channel and this channel may uh, produce new streamers from its end they are heated and so the channel becomes very large with a relatively small voltage of approximately uh, one or two kilovolts you saw the 12 centimeter discharge and the torch discharge occurs when the frequency is higher than six or nine megahertz it may vary from the electrode form and uh, the power going into the discharge is uh, higher than 30 watts all right i thought you wouldn't mind a little bit more demonstration so here you can see the uh, high frequency corona it's the same generator the same everything but it's a sharp point and uh, i'm putting a lot less power into the discharge fewer than 30 watts to be clear and you can see this corona resembles the torch discharge but it's actually purple so that means the main mechanism of ionization is uh, photo ionization and electron avalanche multiplication you can see I can put some arcs with it but overall it's a small purple discharge and if I increase the power it will transfer to the torch arc because this is a small uh, what is it a wire it will start melting you will see probably a green discharge because it's a copper wire and yeah you can see the torch arc I guess it will start melting soon yeah you see it's melting you can see the green color I hope it doesn't spill on my wooden table that would be pretty bad
Yeah. Something like that. And at the end, I want to tell you about a little bit of controversy I found about the discovery of this discharge. In the most sources I've read, it says that USSR professor Zilitinkevich discovered this discharge in 1928, and uh, I believed uh, that was true. But uh, later on, I have found the old, and when I say old, I mean silent movie type of old, uh, General Electric uh, documentary about its uh, labs and uh, electronic equipment. It's actually very interesting. Uh, the 1927 documentary and in it you can see the torch discharge <laughs> and not a small one it's pretty big from their new developed radio frequency tubes uh, but I guess because uh, Americans don't mm, distinguish this discharge as uh, a new type of discharge they just thought eh, some kind of single electrode arc okay who cares and uh, didn't bother to say that's a new invention. So yeah, kinda like that. I guess that's all for today. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, uh, subscribe to my channel, tell your friends about this video, leave a comment if you want to ask something or say something. And yeah, see you next time.